Welcome to Gorilla Radio, episode 159. Oh man, uh, I'm Joe Caprino. We got a special guest from the South, Dustin Bentz, joining Mike and I. So, Triple B is fired up. How is the South these days? Hey, first, you're going to have to address me as 2023 Folk South State Champion Triple B. That'll have to be the rest of the show. <laughs> And and I wore my Bobby the Brain Heenan shirt because sometimes I feel like like him and I are the only two smart people around sometimes. But the South is doing great. <laughs> We're awesome. We're excited to host the 2024 IHSA State Finals in the only place that should be hosting it, the Crescent City, Evansville, Indiana. I mean, I, I need to just let you just let you you do the inter- intros. So <laughs> I'm already bringing the heat. So I was thinking that man. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Whitehead, no, Kevin Whitehead at Evansville, huh? Are we are we gonna get him? He to... could come to Evansville. It's close. C- can he pull the uh, whole, like, Brett Favre and come year. out of retirement? Shit, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna be fun tonight. I know that for a fact. Triple B is fired up. He's gonna tell us why why Evansville is a better place to go to for state. He's fired up about Team State because. The the computer Man. algorithm does not like the South. And then I don't know what else. Host. Host, host, host. You got a pre- hey, we were talking just before as we were getting on air. We got a preview of the uh semi state coming up this weekend in Jeffersonville. Hey, I know all you guys ever talk about northern matches in the region and stuff, but this Saturday <laughs> in in Jeffersonville. With yours truly wearing the stripes, I almost wore my ref shirt tonight, but I thought some refs might get mad if I did that. <laughs> uh, Jeffersonville, Brownsburg, Columbus East, Jennings County, Evansville Memorial, Tell City, South Dearborn. I'm probably forgetting a couple teams, but it's going to be a pretty good day in uh, Jeffersonville Saturday. And I'll be calling uh, pins and stalls all day long. So hey, uh, that's all you're going to call? Stalls and falls, baby. That's all we call <laughs> stalls and falls. <laughs> yeah, it's a shirt. You're you're a, for, you're a former heavyweight. You don't know what stalling is. Actually, you do. But I did because <laughs> I I was an electric heavyweight. So yeah, I didn't know what stalling was for sure. <laughs> yes. So do you actually call Man. stalling? We need we need to we need some video of you refing. I think we need to critique that on one episode. Do you have any video? Uh, no, 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 I don't We're record talking. myself refing. I don't well, know. I'm gonna have to get We're like talking. Snyder to do it. I'm sure Morgan. I'm sure Morgan will be recording in the corner on his little Samsung device or whatever he has. So, <laughs> oh, geez. yeah. So Mike's going to be at the the uh, the harvest on the mic. Mike on the mic. On the mic. Yeah. So I get to go back there. We we're just talking. Then I'm going straight to a play. So high school play. You know, checking those out. The daughters are in it, so that'd be fun. Oh yeah. So. Pulling the double. I'm, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I might. I got. We have some baseball lessons till about eleven. I'm like, man, I can maybe go to Indy. Indy ha- Westfield is a, a the the Shamrock Slam. Should be some good matches, but also the uh, the Cathedral Duels look like it might. It got beefed up a little bit this year with with the addition of Floyd Central. Oh, and Troy Han's gonna be there. Man, you better. Troy's be- always there. You better be, you know, hey, you know, on Matt one, we have, you know, these two guys refed by the one, the only Troy Hahn. I used to do that, try to do that when we did the live broadcast. You know, the officials a shout out. They do a good job. Yeah. So, yeah, the Cathedral Duels has, if this is right, but because no one will get me their schedules. Um, there are B teams there. Uh, Ryle, Kentucky. They always have. They are not. They always have some pretty good kids. Avon, Floyd Central, Greenfield Central, Warren Central, and Indianapolis Cathedral. So that should be a pretty good day of wrestling, I'd say. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good ranked matchups there. It's good to see Floyd get in there and kind of. They're like on the bubble and all that. It's probably one of the ones you know, Dustin. Like it's it's tough. Like I know we've talked about it before. Um, like we have the vote in, but like I didn't know Hunter May was going back to Floyd. That that's huge points. If that was if that was if he was there last year, I I'm sure that he would have already they would already be in. And obviously, I'm sure uh, 
Um, Snyder didn't know that they were going to lose the Al Capone. Yeah. Right. Snyder. Oh, yeah. Snyder. Yeah. They, they lost VZ and, and, um, and Ocampo. Ocampo. Yeah. So, yeah, they're going to be. It's, I mean, yeah, that, that if you add, you take those away and add in, I think it was a pretty close vote or pretty close, not even vote, but uh, score there. Those are, uh, Add a state runner up minus a state runner up. That's a lot of points from from my calculation. Put Floyd in. Put Floyd in. Put Floyd <laughs> in. Hey, I don't get it, man. Last year was East, who wasn't in, got in because of Greenfield Central did the right thing and end up getting runner ups. Floyd, it's going to happen to Floyd this year. Like fix that antiquated process of of heavy favoring every team north of fucking of flipping I seventy. <laughs> and go and give the South some love. I mean, come on. How many? We're going to do this every year. I felt like, did I've had this talk before? And uh, actually, Joe made probably my favorite video of all time um, when I got on this rant. I don't feel like the region gets a lot of love in that either. Like, how many teams from the region are going? Crown Point, who else? Mishwaka's region when they're good. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> Yeah. Like I know Hobart's been, but like for like when you look at like the the place, obviously like the biggest ones in Mooresville, Mooresville gets a ton of points. But like some of those smaller teams at Mooresville get hammered because you do have like the Brownsburgs and you have the um the uh you know Center Grove, Avon. So those bigger teams are gonna eliminate some of those guys early and you're not getting those points. Like some of those smaller schools in that area. Yeah, uh West Central. Um They're, Wallace, that's not well, right. Wallace C was. You got New oh, Prairie. That's um, not region either. <laughs> and New Prairie has like a point. split. And I, think they, I think they're on the time zone split. Yeah. Well, yes, hey, so. Yes, they are. I mean, in fairness, Crown Point eats up like eight bids because those kids probably wrestle for eight different schools. So, I mean, really, <laughs> that's eight bids there for one school. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. You're one day. a couple of different states, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I think that, like, uh, it's tough. It, it, it is weird because I think, like, like you're right. Like, Floyd should be in. Like, Floyd's really good. Um, and then it comes down to, like, you know, a vote where just however they're performing at that time. I think last year it came down to uh, Greenfield Central and Columbus East. And they had wrestled early on. Yeah. And yeah. beat up, but like they had some guys out lineup, but then ended up ended up being right, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 They uh, um, looking at the points here. Snyder had one sixty four point five. Columbus East got in at one sixty. Floyd Central was one, and Greenfield Central were both at one fifty nine. So they're the last two out. And then you have McCutcheon at one fifty six. New Haven it was good. I mean, McCutcheon's good, man. Yeah. New Haven, who has, who has a pretty good team too, one fifty three. Plus they got Ocampo, so if you if you would recalculate that, it would look a little bit. I mean, definitely Floyd would be in. Uh, Snyder would probably be Snyder would be out. I don't know. I'd have to you know get the whole the uh, my, my uh, calculator out to figure it out. But it'd be interesting to see who got in there. Um, and then you know the Cavs up there at one sixty eight. That's you know. Could easily be get overtaken by those guys. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, how that transpires. <laughs> um, and, and, and now like obviously I had this talk before about Lafayette Harrison, but like I feel like it's crazy that like um like that Jay County area like they assume get so many points and those teams get in a lot. I know like this isn't Sunday and we're not talking Adams County, but those like I feel like those guys get in and I, man it's like. How are these guys all getting in here all the time? I know there's not like a ton of big schools competing in those areas, so like uh, it's different. But I think it's harder to get guys through like the Crown Point Regional or Mooresville or you know some of those like Indy Regional. They're not listening to uh, Dane's show on Dane and Rex show last week. They were talking about Indianapolis Lutheran. Um, they moved all these teams into that regional, and now they're like. Like the balance is off there, saying like they they move a bunch of teams into that Perry regional. Yeah, there are six from the Jay County regional that are at Team State. Six teams. Is that is that the most from any of them? 
Uh, I would probably say yes without going through any. I mean, that's more than all of the East Chicago Central semi state. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, like uh, obviously, like there there's smaller schools in that area, but I think that like like they're like well like because you have and I, I obviously was on there and I was all angry so I wasn't listening as well like sometimes when your anger overtakes your ears <laughs> but um there like I think there's, like there could be a better like I know coaches have to submit it but there's like a like a way that we can look at it now like I think we have better idea of like who's doing well at freshman and sophomore we've seen that like okay cool they have a big representation there that's going to be points in your lineup who's doing well at middle school state like that's going to be for the most part like the guys that are like placing there are going to be guys that are going to be impact guys. Look at a guy like uh, Henry Farrote is killing it for Belmont right now. Mm-hmm. You know, like those are guys that are going to step in your lineup. I think there's like a system that we can look at that's not like, well, they're freshmen, they'll have to wait their turn. Like it doesn't really work like that anymore. Like I, for rankings, and I'm sure uh, Dustin is the same way, when I'm looking at like who's going to come and impact the semi state, I'm looking at middle school results for middle yeah. school state. And I'm like, okay, cool. That guy's a middle school state champ. That's better than a semi-state qualifier. And we kind of got some, we we kind of got some uh, flack on that on somebody's like social media, but that's the truth. Like Peyton Hornsby's really good. It wasn't us. It was how we got some, how we got some slack. But um, Peyton Hornsby's a guy that's potentially going to be a medalist. Like I don't need him to wrestle a high school match, dude. I lost in the ticket round. There was a freshman, dude. Alex Hurst was a freshman. I knew he was better than me when I was. A senior. Like when he was eighth grade, I was like, he's gonna be all right, man. He's pretty good. Yeah, Hornsby won national. Yeah, I mean, I used <laughs> he won the national. I used to not rank freshmen. Uh I used to not rank freshmen at all. And kind of like that old school mentality, they have to earn their spot uh in the rankings. But you know, that's just an injustice to the rankings, the integrity of the rankings, the guys coming in. I mean, we've progressed so much of a state in the last five, six, seven years anyway, that you're just getting absolute hammers walking in this freshman now. So. Oh yeah. Uh, Vargo is right. Like uh, I would even say like winning middle school states harder than making a semi-state. I would say like in some of those weight class placing at middle school state is harder than getting to semi-state. Like there's, we were just saying like, there's some semi-states where you're going to go forfeit first round of regional. Yeah. Like, Dude, you're like that. Let's say like 105 at middle school state. Like, there's not a lot of forfeits in that top 10, 20. All those guys are gonna be impact guys. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so many events. Uh, just like Nick said, IPO, middle school state, freshman sophomore. Especially uh, freshman sophomore is huge. I know you use you use that for rankings. I, there's a lot of events out there now that we can gauge how good these guys are. Especially guys, you know. The hardest one, I know you guys will say this, you know, hardest weights to rank are the upper weights early on because you're just trying to put in names and you're like looking at a regional qualifier. Well, he's 18 and 12 as a freshman. That's probably not too bad at 195 pounds or whatever that right. you're at. But now you have, you can see, well, man, that kid went, you know, he was fourth at middle, at a freshman, sophomore. Okay. He's legit. <laughs> uh Zach Johansson literally just said the most region comment on here. If they walk in your school, that's, that's a hundred percent. Like, that's like, uh, we were doing, I mean, Mike, we were into rankings. we had already posted preseason rankings and we're still getting messages about kids. We had listed uh, at the wrong school. Like uh, oh, yeah. the name escapes him out. Deacon Dressler. I think we had him listed as modern day and he's going to Gibson Southern. I mean, you know, it's just, where do they end up at? And, I'm not saying Deacon Dressler transferred anything. I'm just saying that was an example of a kid that we had the wrong school marked down that. Yeah, I think there was a uh, Wyatt Ory too. I, I think that uh, Sam Howard, I, I thought like for sure those were going to be modern day guys. Those guys were like Mauer Coughlin, everything. I felt like Blake and uh, and Matt are like letting Greg down over there. He, he didn't get <laughs> those guys in, man. You got to start making superpowers. I, I told Joe that a long time ago, man. Four Wayne needs to get like one team just combine them and we go compete. Yeah. It used to be Yorktown back in the day, right? Yeah, that was Yorktown. Yep. Yorktown used to have a lot of guys. Uh, they were the, uh, you know, to take everyone type stuff. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they always had quite a few new guys in there. There's some teams that kind of sneaky do it, but it's not. It, it's, it, it definitely is. It's weird hearing stuff from different areas, especially the re- region. Things are a little bit further apart here. I mean, for, where I am at, 
we could, I, I mean, I could, my kids could go to four or five different schools and not add more than five minutes to their drive. But, you know, you start getting different areas and it, it can, you're not going to, I mean, you're going to have to make a half hour, 45 minute drive to school every day. And that's, that's tough for, for a parent. <laughs> so. Um, oh yeah. Dude, uh, I'm like always confused. I like them confused. Like the girls drive from Lowell to Andran every day. That, and no, she doesn't take the highway, but it's, you know, 35, 40 minute drive. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine. I, I know that Joe Stanley's in here. I couldn't imagine like sending my kids to Mount Carmel. Like we drove up there. Like that, that's a, that's a real like commitment, time commitment for the family. Yeah. And, and like, that's and not even the, the kids drive. you're not even adding what the heck. Um, <laughs> that you're not even adding in going to, for practice and, you know, uh, practice getting over at six o'clock and then another hour drive back home. Oh yeah. During, during the worst traffic, man, that 94 traffic is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. We might have to go through that this year. I don't know. I, I gotta, I gotta figure out what my priorities are when, when the Cubs sign show, I'm definitely going to be at uh, Cubs convention. So just, <laughs> so my Dustin, you got, you want to drive up and, uh, and broadcast the uh, Mount Carmel and Crown Point duel. Oh, get some voice from the South. I like that. It's it's, uh, it's, it's an event, man. And it's <laughs> at Mount Carmel. It's, it's, de- it's definitely cool, man. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. It Mount is. Carmel does a good job. It was, we did both of them and Mount Carmel's was like right on top of you. There's people getting thrown out, people right on the mat. So it was good. Yeah. So you <laughs> baseball talk again. Hey, um, that's not youth baseball talk. That that that's the South Side there, Mr. Oh, Thomas. Come on, man! Don't do that. <laughs> do they even have a team anymore? Are they going? Hey, down you to think? AAA? You think a Tommy after wasting away with the Angels would go do the same thing with the Cubs? I mean, the <laughs> Cubs and the Angels kind of. I mean, the Cubs won one in 2016, but I mean, other than that, they kind of mirror each other. <laughs> I don't know. They they come waste away with the red. Them. Come waste away with the red legs. Yeah. <laughs> they got the young team, man. I, I, man. I can't see them leaving the West Coast, man. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where he lands. That's that's for sure. It's a uh, it, Cubs are going to offer him like half of Chicago. So <laughs> actually, he probably hey. buy Chicago with what they're going to offer him. Circling back to that sectional realignment and stuff i just got to plug like my sectional genius county section the largest sectional in the state now added franklin and indian creek uh salem i think they also added and moved zero people out so way to go ihsa way to make our day even longer now in north <laughs> vernon indiana man uh my like, geography is weird but like i feel like those are kind of far drives to go there <laughs> yeah that made that made no sense and like uh for example switzerland county kind of up and coming we did an article on them last year but they should be if you look at a map, they're like 30 minutes from that South Dearborn or Lawrenceburg section, whoever hosts that over there. But now they're driving all the way to Jennings County and then all the way even farther next weekend to Jeffersonville for regional. So, yeah, it didn't make a lot of sense on any of that realignment. But maybe now we'll get more points in that uh, BCS kind of alignment point scheme with the sectionals now. We can <laughs> scheme a couple more teams into those team state duels. So, uh uh, do you think that – and I don't know how any of it worked. I have, this is, like, a legitimate question. Like, did someone from the IHSA just, like, move the teams and say, hey, this is how it's going to work out? Or, like, someone from the wrestling community say, uh, like, like Chris said, hey, we're going to take the Fort Wayne semi-state champ and put him in East Chicago. <laughs> and, and I don't want to misspeak, but wasn't it well, – it was the coaches' association, right? Like, I don't want to misspeak. I'm just – from what I've heard, I, I believe it was the coaches' association that helped with that. I could be wrong. Yeah. I'm sure my phone will blow up here in about 0.2 seconds telling me I'm wrong, but – it was they had a meeting and I know there's some coaches on it so but I know they put together kind of what they thought and then the IHSA kind of does you know they look at it and then changes it however they feel it is it works so and I don't it's ah, our, president Cook. Said, our president said Jason Cook I, yeah so I, I'm I'm not sure but some of those were like seem like Falcon some, said Falcon said I'll take the fall fellas just tell them it was me yeah. that was uh <laughs> Could Big Robert put, there. put Falkins' phone number on there so people can call him if they have complaints. <laughs> we'll see how long you stay as a president real quick. <laughs> uh, call the IHSAA and, or call the Indianapolis Star and have him do an article on this. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Did Joe sent me that uh, when we were doing it. He's like, did you read the Indy Star? I'm like, 
Never. I've never read the Indy Star. <laughs> <laughs> like, and any time like, I do try to read the Indy Star, I'm not paying for the Indy Star. And like Cook told me last year, I think like, it was an open article. I definitely checked the articles. A lot of those are not open. <laughs> but uh, how how was that drive for you guys to Evansville? Because it's gonna be a hike for us, man. It's it's far. It's uh, I mean, just for us already in the semi state, it's three hours from Madison to Evansville. I mean, nobody's getting any sympathy for me about whining about having to drive because we do it every year. Uh yeah, we're we're coming from the furthest part, man. It's pretty far. I'm for I'm I further. heard. I'm five and a half hours or five hours away or something. I don't know. Whatever. It's far enough. Hey, I heard Crown, Crown Point's chartering a jet. Surely you can get your way on that, right, Mike? Yeah, I heard. Hey, I think I could, man, honestly. I, I got like a, a ghost ticket for the state championship football game that I didn't take. Like They're like, do you want to go? We're leaving right now. And I was like, <laughs> uh, I feel like it looks bad, but I kind of, I've never been to a state football game. I didn't go, but it was close for about a half. And then after that, man, Browns or Ben Davis is pretty good. I actually, I think. Hey, here's Indiana the deal. Mass- Here, go ahead. Uh, Indiana Matt's gonna charter a party bus that starts from Fort Wayne, goes to uh, Indy or uh, Evansville. <laughs> through gonna- Madison. Um, I'm sure. Why not? I mean, why not just you know? We're in. <laughs> we just got the we just got the it's plug, just, man. <laughs> it's a straight shot. Just you can come to Madison and then <laughs> cop. It's like an L. Go get there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're gonna have a we're party gonna fly bus. To Gary Airport. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have stops, you know, in Anderson, Indianapolis, Bloomington, Madison. You know, we're just gonna French Lick. Maybe maybe we'll go visit Larry Bird. So that'd be great. We better leave Tuesday. And just take our time. <laughs> I'll, I'm a, hey, I'll come to Fort Wayne and just ride the bus all the way back down. I mean, I don't want to miss any stops. Yeah. That, oh man, I can I can only imagine on the way back there will be no, no the radio will not be played. It'll just be silent because everyone's probably gonna be hungover. <laughs> <laughs> hey talking about state uh i know people are kind of critical of evansville and and we'll just kind of dang a little carrot that i'm working on um doing a live guerrilla radio thursday night of state um uh, i reached out to some of my buddies in evansville they hit me up with some bars or not bars but establishments and we're going to look on doing a live guerrilla radio open to the public Thursday night. So that wouldn't happen in Fort Wayne. doesn't happen in Indianapolis either, nor would it ever happen up in Maryville, Crown Point, East Chicago, whatever. Only in Evansville will Triple B bring you. We can make that happen. If, I, did I tell you, if the semi state was in East Chicago, we'd make that happen. I think the thing is, like, uh, for a long time, Joe was coaching, and he, they had a lot of success at that point. Not as much success right now, but back then, <laughs> Carol – Carol Fort Wayne was doing pretty good. So, except for one night, I remember in the old war, Joe, Joe had a lot of guys Friday night and did not have a lot of guys Saturday morning. He was pretty but, sour that year. He didn't talk yeah. at all. Uh, we, we, we met for a, a couple of drinks and um, Joe, Joe put him away. <laughs> now, now I can do it for fun. I don't have to be stressed out. That's the best part. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to. We're looking to have something on uh, Thursday evening. I know that I'm planning on getting in Thursday evening. So Yeah, I'll probably – see, there's no way I'm driving down that morning. I'll come in Thursday evening. Yeah, so I think we, we may or may not already have hotels and at least like three or four rooms. So we're going to be – and maybe just have it in our hotel, you know, have a little bit – have a show and he, have a – He just said he'd get us a, a, a sponsored place, oh, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're yeah, gonna yeah. have our own. Uh, double. If all else fails, if all else fails, we'll go to the Hillside Inn and have some hog brain sandwiches and do a little broadcast right next door to Modern Day. So <laughs> we'll figure yes. something out. I think, man, I think we can make that happen. If it was in the region, I think we can make it happen. We get it right on the square, dude. It'd be all right. <laughs> if we got that far up, we just go to Chi Town and do something at that point. <laughs> dude, hey, we, we took the back road to uh, Mount Carmel one year through uh, Gary through Black Oak. I thought. Nick was scared. Nick was definitely <laughs> not. People. Yeah, we, we cultured Nick. I, I, he did we not met, tell. Yeah, he did not tell Ann about his uh, trip through Black Oak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What we'll the go, man? Uh, get some people there. Maybe do like a long show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited just to go to Evansville for one time in my life, and then say I've been there, and then I can be done with it. You've never been to Evansville? No. 
Hey, once you go, you'll want to have it there every year. <laughs> no, nah, I don't, do don't think so. Semi-state, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evansville semi-state. The Ford Center, baby. Ford Tough Locks. Will we do some state Ford Tough Locks this year? Will Triple B do his semi-state preview rolled over the next weekend to state with my Ford Tough, Ford Tough Locks, Barry Horowitz, terrible draws? I don't know. We might get wild this year. Who knows? Man, two weeks in a That's row a with, with Dustin. Dude, Main Street, man. Ooh. Unfried says Tironi. Tironi's a solid. I've been there before. There's, I mean, Evans was the Gerst House, Hillside yeah, I, Inn, Tironi's. I mean, Gerst House is good. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh... – <laughs> I, I, hope I know. I, 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 I just know we're gonna have a pre. I don't think. I don't, do you even need to preview the wrestling? Just preview all the good food places. <laughs> wrestling. I mean, we know Evansville will win fifty percent of the medals. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> I mean, we ain't got to do all that. <laughs> nice. Hilltop. I keep saying hillside. Hilltop. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> uh, hillside's a hillside's a hotel in Madison. I always mix that up every year. <laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I'm excited because I felt like uh, Modern Day used to bring like a huge section of people, right? Like, the, like there'd be like whole sections. Now we're gonna be like right in the middle of it. I hope they fill up most of the arena. That'd be fun. That, that they, they, it always was like Modern Day versus the world. Is that kind of like going to NCAs in Iowa? You know, everyone was cheering against them, just because is either you're either Iowa or someone else. There's no. Uh, so yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So, uh, what other? Oh yeah, Dustin, you gonna do any flexing on us, or uh, are we going to? Hey, oh oh, the flexing. <laughs> hey, enough <laughs> enough flexing in your college announcement photos. Do something more original. I mean, half you guys only have biceps to be flexing. So, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, from now on, Joe, you should just Photoshop yourself flexing on every college announcement for the rest of the year. If, if, if somebody uh, if somebody posts one of them flexing, I can I can just redo it. I can do it with my face. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, why did that become a thing? I don't know. I do not know. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So you got Floyd going into the duels. Floyd's in the duels. I mean, Cooper Samuels. If he's making some very logical arguments on there, but there's no there's no logic. Floyd's in. I mean, there's I. Brr. Brrr, if they're not in, that's all I got to say to that. You need to talk to, I mean, maybe we can get you to meet up with uh, a maligned like we did last year, and he can, you, you guys can have a face to face about how the logarithm does not. Uh, There's a reason they quit doing the BCS with the college football rankings. There's a reason they quit doing that. They should put 12 of us in a room in Indianapolis every Tuesday, and we'll figure it out. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> you got to make some, make Dane upset. I got your list here, so don't worry. How are you going to upset Dane? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Dane always gets mad at me for some reason or another. Have you been on the Dane and Rex show yet? I've never been invited because I'm south of Indy, so. <laughs> I feel like who's – at one time, it was like you and I were like the most like uh, frequented guests, right? Yeah. But I don't know who it is now. I haven't been – I feel like uh, – I feel like uh, the coach from Adam Central, man. I feel like he was like a co-host like last week. <laughs> Curry, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they, they like giving Curry some love. Like um, yeah, I, but they they have Gable on there all the time, so I guess you're not as good as Gable. Is that the only one south of Indy that they can talk to, or what? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. That's the file. Gable uh, and Mauer Coughlin. That's it. Yeah, you're gonna have to uh, file a complaint. Why don't you just send them a text real quick and see what? <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, there's like, but like, sometimes I go in there with a game plan. It's like this. Sometimes you go in there, I'm like, I'm going to hit this point, I'm going to hit this point, and then it's off. Then it's not even close to what I was thinking. <laughs> Five minutes later, Rex is saying, okay, nice talk to you. See ya. Yeah, so hangs up on you. And, and then like abruptly hangs up. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, okay. So, yeah, and then I'm like, uh, should I stay on the call? <laughs> <laughs> nope. You have no. They gotta go right to commercial break. They got. They gotta. They gotta pay for those ads. So, um, so you got piss off the region. I don't know if you've already. Already did that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Check. Uh, you, you, no, if you take a shot at Crown Point, the region's happy, man. That makes the region happy. <laughs> I think everyone's against Crown Point right now. <laughs> All right, then region, step up your game, man. If you want, man. don't complain about Crown Point. You got to do a better job of selling your schools, man. 
That's what I was saying. Uh, man, that Crown Point Portage duel was uh, pretty lopsided. And they didn't have a bunch of their guys. Yeah. Crown Point, point. hey, Portage blasted that out, man. They were sure everybody to know that Portage shut out Crown Point that day. That was the flip. Right? Two weeks ago? Well, at the, the B team, they uh, – they they beat up Crown Point's B team, but the A team nothing said nothing said B team near the post I read. <laughs> That's kind of like last year when Madison Junior High beat the Modern Day Junior High team. They brought four kids, and I just put the score, and I didn't put anything about who who Modern Day sent. I mean, two kids were like blind, and one kid couldn't stand up right. But I just said that we beat them. 75 to 6 or whatever that score was. So. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's the text I got. <laughs> you don't say you don't say you don't say any of that. Hey, they put that team out there. That was a that's a dub. <laughs> seen, uh, seen that Mount Carmel Crown Point duel getting a little spicy on the board. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's just like, yeah, that, that'll be a oh man, that's gonna be a good one. That's gonna be an Indiana uh Northwest or Indiana region all-star classic. I know. It's gonna, it's uh it's gonna be tough. I want to get like more like, I, I, Hobart and Crump Point used to do a duel. I'm, I'm surprised they don't do that anymore. Is that still on the schedule? Um, uh, I don't think so. I don't think they have one. I mean, I do. It was have like a weird. Schedule. It was like a Friday night, like before their conference or something. But I guess that's why Mount Carmel's there now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they wrestle anymore. Yep, the Clark boys are going to be back. Uh, yeah, if they, if they want to practice this week. <laughs> yeah. How many practices do you have to get in before you can compete? Five, Ten, right? Four or five, I think. Oh, yeah, they do wrestle on January. Wait, that's not right. Joe <laughs> said next week. So, yeah. Yeah, they probably might have taken a day off or two. Yeah, they got uh, – they played enough. Look, we got nine different numbers from all that uh, – we got coaches all throwing out different numbers for practices. <laughs> four, five, right. eight, four. <laughs> see, this is what they're going to do, man. They're going to get them out there for four and then get them in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Hey, see, they were going to morning practice at CP during football, I heard. They were all – they were counted there as present the whole time. So. Um. <laughs> Who's, who's going to win the four wins on my state now? Delta. Delta. Yeah, Delta's probably our – Delta or Western? Western has some pretty good kids coming back. Um, You have some horses. I don't know. Delta's going to have a little bit more depth. Um, Let's see. What is, Do you think – You better say Delta. You have people breathing down your throat if not. Yeah. <laughs> I like Cody, I'll, man. I say, I wouldn't say Delta, but five bucks is five bucks. So. <laughs> yeah, I, Delta probably. I mean, uh, Jay County will have some horses in there. They're gonna go through a pretty good, solid set, uh, sectional regional. Uh, yeah, they got eighteen on team state, man. Yeah, um, I'd say I mean, Delta's probably Delta. Belmont has a cup, a few good guys there. Um, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. Um, yeah, I, it's going to – it could be – I mean, Adam Central has some pretty good kids returning. They don't have – I mean, they were in the mix a couple – last year, and they have some good big guys. They might, you know, get those guys back from football. Uh, New Haven has some hammers. It should be very interesting to see there. Who's going to win uh, Evansville? Brownsburg? Ooh, uh – Man, I don't know, right? Brownsburg or Center Grove depends how that Center Grove lineup shakes out. Like, and then of course Brownsburg. Like, do they stay? I don't know. I'm. It's too early for me to make that prediction. I think, man, I think they're. Um, I heard they might get another gun back, man. I heard they might get one more nice piece back to their lineup, Brownsburg. You're gonna really say can't. or just leave us hanging? I can't say it because if I, if I'm wrong, then I look silly. <laughs> <laughs> But I think people know. Can put, we'll, um, we'll tell you off the air. That's a paid version. That's Gorilla subscription. Um, so if you're a, a uh, if you're a subscriber, you can stay on for the uh, after show. <laughs> they um uh, yeah the the pre show today, man. I I don't know what was going on. <laughs> I think this Bears game had me. This Bears game had me fired up. Kyle Santos out here missing field goals. <laughs> the so only we, good thing you can bet on. Um. But 
Yeah, I think it'd be it'd be interesting. I think that Brownsburg crown point duel is gonna be really good. It'd be interesting to see who gets it for a team state in the big class. Like who's up to who's up to for voting on that? I talked to Ed. Ed sounds like Carmel's gonna be pretty Carmel's usually pretty solid top to bottom. They're, like major's really good, but they're not like they don't have guys that are like four or five champs in there. Or but they have like just solid a solid team every year. Yeah, that that'll be interesting. They um my, the teams that are looking outside looking in. Marday, Maryville, Penn, Zionsville, Hamilton Southeastern, then Carmel and Avon. There's a little bit of a drop off from Carmel to Avon, but uh, yeah, that's going to be. Whew. I mean, Carmel returns only seven guys, so that's how they got. I mean, they got absolutely blasted there. Uh, Marday returns seven too. Well, it was eight at the time, so and they were half a point away from getting an auto bid. So yeah, that's going to be. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say modern day, and I mean, Maryville probably won't accept, so Penn, Zionsville, they'll see each other. No, they won't see each other before then, will they? Maybe. I don't know. When's the vote? Uh, I do not know when the vote is exactly. I'm, I'm part of that voting process. I'm not really sure either. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I know, I know the vote is usually on a Sunday, but like, I just don't know the exact date. Yeah, because I thought... Let's see. Is it the 20? It's either like the 16th or like 23rd or 20 or 17 to 4 20 17. So it'll be before modern 12 17. So it'll, it'll be before uh, Mitchell Walker, Al Smith. Yeah. Yeah. It's always before Al Smith. But I thought, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see who you'll have. Yeah. That, that's a tough one. Because I thought. Henry Wilk, Zionsville, no, Westfield's there. Westfield, Schneider, Penn. So, yeah. Um, the day after the Hilbert Super Duel, Zionsville, who will they have? I, I mean, I'd say it's going to be, that last one's going to be between Zionsville and and uh, Penn. Um, who does Zionsville have? They have this. They have the Eagle Invite. That's a pretty solid one. Uh, they'll have Avon and Cathedral before that, so they'll, they'll be okay. tested. Man, so, Avon, Avon's good too. I thought they, I mean, they had some guys that obviously uh, left. Bo left. Bo was pretty good, and then they had uh, a couple of guys that ended up staying down, like not coming in as a freshman, which probably hurts them a little bit. But they're tough down low. I mean, they're really tough. Yeah. So, oh, Zionsville's going to. Um, Modern Day this weekend. So they'll see Modern Day in Union County, North Posey, Evansville North. Evansville North has some sneaky good kids, don't they, Dustin? Uh, like, like I'm not right sure. That 150, 170 range. Like 150, 157, 165. I think they're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Ingram, the Bagger, for the Peyton Bear. Bell, Let's go. Austin Bell. Yeah, from 50 on up, they, they have some solid guys. Per the profiles, but yeah, so that should be a good, uh, you know, modern day in Zionsville. That's a big, that's going to be a big match um, for team state implications. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, let's see. Anything else that Dustin definitely wanted to get over before we uh, get on to other things? Enough flexing, hype, hype state at the fort, the Ford Center. So I think we. You said the fort. That, that you just that was a Freudian slip <laughs> there saying state at the fort. That's a plug. We're trying to we're trying to get a sponsorship. We're trying to get an advertising. Yeah, Andy owes me some money for some sponsorships, so he's gonna start sponsoring it. Girl of Radio brought to you by the Fort. The Fort. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do a spot. We just had the rankings used to be sponsored. Are they still sponsored? Yeah, three time gear, our exclusive okay, gear vendor. So yeah, they they're the ones that come to IPO. They're real good guys and. Yeah, if you need some gear, just make sure you pay them. Unlike some people that may or may not run other websites. Um, <laughs> does they have another flow wrestling. We're taking more shots at flow wrestling. Yes, yes, more of it. Yes, man. I, 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 I see, like on Twitter, you're kind of going at those guys pretty hot. Oh, yeah. Not a fan or what? Yeah, you got You got You got to get them. You know, get them a little. Uh, you know, go after them a little bit every so often. So yeah. They, they I bet 
I've been on Twitter getting financial advice from Zach Mello. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, he's pretty good. <laughs> That's the best place to get some uh, financial advice is Twitter. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to do, man. Oh yeah, they get yeah class. Uh, if you did buy, if you did purchase Flow, you get like forty uh, six cents if you fill out a form. So um, <laughs> they can't even get you parking I get to in keep that forty six cents. Yeah, you get. Man, you get, I, I thought it was six dollars. Oh, we don't six get six dollars anymore. Difference. <laughs> oh. So, Dustin, I pay for your uh, subscription, so I need that six bucks. <laughs> That's why I asked. Do I get to keep that or forward it to you? <laughs> it's awfully random also. The minute you start going at their throat, my subscription got canceled also. So. <laughs> and so did mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. The, the vice president calls me, and then all of a sudden, the next day, I can't access flow. <laughs> I lost all my son's wrestling matches. Now I got to pony up or figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> nice. So, anyway, um, what else are we gonna talk about tonight? We got a lot of good, good, a lot of good events this week. This is a, as Mike always says, this is the week uh, that the season really gets started. Um, last week, I guess we we'll go over a little bit of what happened last week. Um, the Red Hawk Super Duel, Goshen Belmont dominate. Yes, uh, yes, and there was some, uh, some an altercation at the end from what we have gathered. So, dude, we're gonna have to get Belmont a private security detail, man. Remember they had it at uh, Al Smith last year too. Yeah, man, they just got to get them. They're good boys. You can't be going after them. Uh, we did have the the turkey duels at Homestead. I made a, a guest appearance there. Homestead beat. The Calb in the finals. I think uh, saw some good matches there. Uh, Northridge kind of mat- gave uh, gave Homestead a pretty good match. Uh, end up coming down kind of to the last match that they would have need to pin was the two fifteen between some uh, Caleb Evans and Travis Hankey. That was uh, pretty. That was a solid match. Two pretty good uh, sized two fifteen pounders, and they both moved pretty well. So that was a pretty good match for both those guys early in the season. So, um, kind of keeping Hanky was one he came in, went into what semi state undefeated and ended up losing as a sophomore. So, he's back and he's pretty good size 215. So, keep an eye out on him. Um, the Edgewood invite, uh, the, the gobbler went on. Anything you guys saw that uh, uh jumped out at you? <laughs> I mean, I, I saw, obviously, I was talking with Dane. There was a lot of region teams at uh, at Goshen. So I was kind of following that a little bit. Um, what else? Well, I see Super Duel. I kind of followed that a little bit. Like, nothing, nothing crazy. I mean, it's. I think it's still a tough week because you, you did have a lot of teams still playing football. Yeah. I, I checked out the DAC JV tournament. <laughs> I didn't go there. I just watched it online. Nice. North Miami beat. I West. ref. I ref the. Uh, I ref the Turkey Tussle in Jeffersonville. Jeffersonville, Corden Central, Scottsburg, and then like seven or eight girls teams there, varsity teams. So. Any, anyone that, that uh, any any Corey Dons that uh, stuck out? Because I say Corey Don. Who's? Yeah, Jay Newsley. I think he's ranked in the state. He looked pretty good. Scottsburg has a kid who I slept on in the rankings. Uh, Kellen Carter coming off Tommy John surgery, he missed. Uh, last year with Tommy John surgery, um, those were two kids that stuck out. Of course, Jeff, uh, Ben Land, and the uh, Scottsburg's heavyweight uh, Craig. They had a pretty good battle. Land came out on top, but yeah, I mean, we look good down south. So the, they had that like gobbler tournament, which is I think we talked about that a little bit last week. It was like a, a kind of like a um, block weights. Yeah, just pretty cool and. A lot of, I think, uh, didn't, I think Center Grove won it. They brought in like 34 kids, which helps. I don't know exactly if I was looking at the scoring now. Yeah, they only scored one kid per weight, but that was a, yeah, that those are always a, that's kind of hard to tell when they, yeah, they blocked about three dozen weight classes. <laughs> so, it looked like a handful of like uh, B teams there. I mean, like, like Brownsburg's B team was there, Perry Meridian, um, Center Grove. I think it was like a mix. Yeah, no, ten score. But uh, uh, Southport, I know there's a couple real South Southport guys. 
so yeah no nah, yeah yeah that's pretty i mean they had quite a few guys there and i mean quite a few teams 15 teams there's like quite a few uh almost 300 wrestlers so uh, it's a interesting way to do it and it's actually probably you know especially for the younger guys it's probably better for them i mean they had a 96 to 105 pound weight class so that was good 106 to 116 might might not have been as good but 111 to 1 to 122 i think they split guys up so if you do down your multiple kids they put you in a different pool than the other it looks like they had the big crazy brackets 16 man you go pools then brackets i think uh i think it's really cool like um for a tournament like yeah you're hitting 16 guys in every way but also like especially after thanksgiving man like yeah like you're getting a lot of matches you're not like having like it's not like a hard make weight um I mean, you're probably around, but you're going to wrestle, but it's still pretty cool that you get to go in there and get a lot of good matches right in that same weekend. Yeah, and you don't have to totally worry about your weight, even though you have to stay within a decent amount for your weight management plan, but no, it's a good event, and obviously you got about 300 kids wrestling. Everyone got five matches, or close to five matches. I, I like the way they did the pools where they did pool and then a bracket. That way, you know, depending on how you did in your pool, you would kind of get thrown into a bracket that's more even for your ability and you get i mean you get you're going to get two or three matches at least very worst case scenario you're getting two or three matches that are at your level whether it's high level or oh. lower level so i think that like, they should do that more uh and i'm sure dustin can kind of talk to this too like in the softball tournaments that we do like you'll do your pool and it'll just be random and then you get put into a bracket so if you did bad in your pool you're going right into like a really good team and then you're going home in a single limb but um, like it really, it'd probably be really easy to say, hey, we're gonna have a gold, silver, bronze, or you're gonna get an equal amount of games or matches based on like your level, because at that at some point, like you want to be wrestling. Like good kids don't want to wrestle really bad kids, and bad kids are not trying to just go out there and get embarrassed, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there's the right, yeah. Out, so. Some of those tournaments. So I've coached several youth tournaments with the outlaws, and then you know my son Brendan in eighth grade, I've taken him to some tournaments. But yeah, it's kind of what you say, Mike. Like you have the pool day one and then day two they split it into different um different brackets and then they see even still they'll wrestle back so you're guaranteed you know a max amount of matches it's not you know wrestle three times one day and then single limb the second day so it would be cool to kind of see teams go that i've heard of teams or tournaments in kentucky that have um day one's duels and then day two is a double elimination tournament so you're getting seven eight matches guaranteed uh, and it counts somehow they do it in Kentucky. It just counts as that um, super kind of dual point spread or whatever. Yeah, that's I, th I think they, they kind of went Northmont that way now, right? Northmont used to yeah. be straight duels, and now I think it's like one day of duels and one day individual. Yeah, I thought I was posted something about that. Someone was saying something about a tournament. And I'm like, just go with like how they do like 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 um Trikoff, like Trikoff or the Westfield uh, Shamrock Slam where you have a pool and then you're putting in different brackets. And then, I mean, I think that's best for teams, especially some like that, that if you're crown point or cathedral, you're going, you know, you're getting tougher matches as you get going. And then everyone else is kind of, you know, if, if you're winning, you increase your level of difficulty. If you're losing, you decrease your level of difficulty. And that kind of is. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, th I think that's a good way to get kids good experiences and, you know, not just have a 60-man bracket and go 0-2 oh, and, two and, you know, they'd be done and hate life. And, you know, that sounds like a Indiana Matt in-season guerrilla tournament somewhere. We'll oh, do yeah. duels one day and individual the second day. Yes. I, think, I mean, I think it'd be good. I think it's just better. Um, I mean, obviously, there's levels of varsity and JV level. But I think, like, even, like, team-wise, there's, like, you want to wrestle people you're getting better with. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's good for anyone to go out there and get shut out. Right. I mean, it might feel good for the team that's winning, but I don't think that those, like, there's a reason some of these teams are leaving and going to different events, you know? Yep. And a lot of it is just level of competition and getting those matches in. Wish I could figure out where. I know I was saying something on the board the other day about uh, pretty recently, and I'm like, why don't we just do something like that and go from there? So. I'll find it somewhere. <laughs> I'll tell you what they say in the softball world. 
Say it's a money grab, Joe. They're all about the money. <laughs> That's what I've heard from those events. So I've heard. So yeah. That's what I heard about uh about IH IHPO. It's just a money grab, just trying to take everyone's money. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um anything let's see what else going on this week this week we have zionsville noblesville's tomorrow it should be a pretty solid match there noblesville has some you know two returning state qualifiers so they should have a little bit of fight in them there should be a good match there um Terre Haute south and owen valley's i think owen valley they've been in the mix they're what two yeah, they good guys. yeah yeah and I think they were they're not even close to the mix now. Oh no, they are. They're pretty far out. Or they're not too far out, but they're you know, have a good match there. Could put them in the uh in the realm there. Uh Perry Meridian and Franklin, the Tante Memorial. <laughs> Wait, he's not dead. <laughs> so it's a Tante um the Tante invite. That should be a good match. Uh, you know, number ten and 3a versus number four in the state and perry has some you know they're gonna be pretty solid again mcconaughey and oak hill i believe mcconaughey is in they got some really good guys in that too. team state oak hill is not yeah oak hill is pretty far down so that's gonna be interesting um so that'll be a good hey team. you can't forget hey tomorrow night madison versus batesville that's mm. going on down south. What's live on ninety live on ninety six point seven WRX, so you can tune in and listen to it on the radio. You even. guys are trying to be just like Belmont, aren't you? We've been doing radio broadcasts for years now. Come on, we do have some Belmont uh, flavor down here with with Pat Mendez, but still, he's uh, he's ter ter turned his ways to the good of Madison. That's right. We're hoping if we get a Belmont guy down here, we might catch a state dual bid in a couple of years. So we'll see. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. The, are you going to be on the call there or are you, are you just going to be announcing how, what you're. Uh, I'm not good enough to be on the call, so I'll just be announcing. You, just, you, know, you guys got the smoke and flames and stuff like that, too. No, <laughs> no, not anymore. We're just old school. It was just uh, we have a mat light. and We have some lasers and <laughs> just, you'll no. get tri triple B on the announcing. That's it. Yeah. The video that I, I, I the uh, the Madison. Your your uh, big tournament, you know, when you when you hear you announce the guys, I mean, it's almost just it's pretty pretty big. I, mean, I don't want to say I know a guy that can replace Whitehead, but I know a guy that can replace Whitehead. <laughs> but I'm already busy this year for state with it being in Evansville. I'm going to be the host in the MC. So <laughs> man, that match, yeah, face for radio. That hurts when they say that, man. Yeah, man. Um. Let's see, Hamilton Southeastern and Avon, uh, Cowan, and South, at South Adams. That's going to be a good one for uh, Team State implications. Um, who else is wrestling? Center Grove, New Pal. Center Grove is really good. Um, New Pal has some pretty good guys. That should be – Yeah, that will be some good matches. Yeah, that's going to be some good ones there. Um, Garrett and DeKalb, the battle for DeKalb County. That's going to be a big one right there. Um, DeKalb County Pride, the fight in Tanner Bowman's versus the former fighter Nick Krause. <laughs> so battle for DeKalb County supremacy is is on the line. I think uh, you might see the Undertaker come out, aka uh, Doug Smoker from East Side. He might just make an appearance. So <laughs> I could talk about the actual Undertaker, Mark Calloway. I was like, he lives in DeKalb County. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll send you a picture here. Uh, after the show, um, you, he m might be the Undertaker. I don't know. He got Carmel at Mount Vernon, Fortville. Should be some good matches in there. Get, get a first look at Carmel. I mean, like you said earlier, Carmel always has fourteen solid guys, um, and that's gonna. I think Mount Vernon, Fortville has some solid guys too. Yeah, yeah. So that should be a good match. Yeah. Uh, you know, give Maybe, it a really uh, good test uh, for see where Carmel is and actually Mount you know, Mount Vernon is. Yeah, I mean, you can get a matchup of uh, Madden Lee, possibly, possibly, and maybe Elijah Brody in there. Yeah, that would be a good one. 
Yep, you got Brody, Mattingly are both projected to be at the same weights. Uh, let's see, you got Brownsburg, Westfield. Brownsburg's first action. Um, Homestead, Carroll. Battle for uh, the big school in Allen County, Pride. So, um, Crown Point and Laporte. That's the, uh, I was talking to those guys, actually, I was talking to Bill this week. They're like on this weird schedule where like one year they don't have any like home duels. Uh, so like they only have like, I think this year they only have like Laporte and Michigan City are their only two home duels. They happened the same year, Jesse's senior year. Oh, jeez. They need to so like that has to be there. Like, and not that those are bad teams, but like they're generally like the teams that don't fill out their entire lineup. So like you could be a senior and not have a match. That's we were taking on the like, Kevin Warriors. Ooh. Carl, Chris Tricop built that house, man. That's that's the, that's his place. Maybe get you guys behind the, the brawl behind the wall. <laughs> uh, let's see, Floyd Central, Jasper. Let's see, I know there's some other good ones. Oak Hill and New Haven. I think that's going to be a good one. New Haven has a pretty solid team. Um, so Oak Hill has two really good matches. <laughs> yeah, he had a nice graphic on the page too. Yeah. For like uh, big events. Yeah, I saw this time. Bruce, I, I got a program that'll help me out with that stuff because I am not good at graphics by any means. Uh, South Adams and De at Delta, that's gonna be a good one. Uh, Wawa C at East Noble, um, that's gonna be a good preview for that regional. And yeah, maybe play Byerly, uh, Caleb Salazar. Yeah, Belmont will be at Bel at Delta on Saturday. So that should be a good one. They're doing a that probably just be a nice rivalry back in the day, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I can imagine back in the day they would fill up the whole both those gyms. Um, probably got loud and rowdy. So uh, some, it should be, a, you know, some real good duels going on this week. As you said, this is the kind of real big week of everything getting started. Uh, Saturday, the next Super Duels. Did, did Greenfield Central beat Delta this past weekend? I believe so. Or is that last week? That would have been maybe last week. Um, yes, they did. 40 to 27. Good. So that's going to be... That's a good one for Greenfield Central, special team trying to get in the team state, fighting Floyd Central for the last spot, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I know Dane said he was getting rank looking at rankings, uh, trying to get him out probably midweek. So waiting for some teams to see some lineups before they make too many uh, too many changes. Yeah, like I said, the next Super Duels at Fairfield. No, it's at no, it's at Lakeland, isn't it? So yeah, they have uh, Friday night. They wrestle like three or four different uh, locations, and then the last day is at one location. So they have a nice two day thing. Um, oh, they have two, oh, geez, they're weird. Anyway, um, HHC Jeffersonville World Championships. Dustin will be there. That's all you got to know. Stalls and falls, baby. Stalls and falls. Man, Josh stops doing another interception. Jeez. <laughs> um, let's see. Modern Day duels will be, you know, we talked about that earlier. Modern Day, Union County, they have the Rainey Brothers, Zionsville, uh, North Posey. Could be, a, could be a number one versus number one, right? Rainey uh, and Schaefer. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Which has been, I think, a nice little rivalry in the past. Yeah. They've Those have been really good competitive matches. Yeah. A couple times. The Shamrock Slam, Mundelein, Illinois. Carmel. Mundelein, man. Mundelein. Mundelein. Sorry. <laughs> Hamilton Southeastern, uh, Homestead, North, uh, Lawrence North, Mount Vernon, Fortville, Noblesville, Norwell, Roncalli, Westfield, Whiteland, Yorktown, Carroll, Ben Davis. So that should be that's gonna be that's always a good day of wrestling. It's always a real good, well run tournament. Solid hospitality room if you get in there. So um Plymouth Duels, Mishawaka, Rochester will be there from my calculations. So that's and, and Plymouth. So you get a good preview of uh, that regional. Uh, was Lowell there also? 
Um, I think they, they used to be there in the past. I know they used to be. I do not have them. It might. I don't have all the schedules, so that could have could be there. Uh, Bloomington will have Bloomington South Center Grove. Comus North. Comus North has some pretty solid kids, don't they, Dustin? Yeah, North solid. They got some uh, guys there. And Thornton's coming back. Shuey. Uh, freshman Cohen Long, Evan Severi, uh, several pretty good kids there, semi-state level kids. Yeah, another another kid I thought that was at another school. I thought he was like a Scottsburg kid, uh, Shuey or not Shuey, but uh, Cohen Long. Yeah, hey, I don't want to brag or anything, but Cohen Long Triple B trained, so uh, <laughs> he's a Columbus North Bulldog now. He was at Scottsburg, now he's a Bulldog. Um, Asher Ratliff, uh, yeah, they, um, he'll be good, uh, probably fighting for a podium spot. So uh, North will be sneaky, man. That sectional. Uh, it'll be really competitive this year, I'm telling you. Coop will have his hands full. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Crop Point does want to get Ben Davis on the mat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, like a, that's like half one of those sideways for those guys. Yeah. That, uh, that uh, the North or the South and, and 6A is kind of good at football. I'll just say that much. Yeah. After seeing Carroll at that state last year, I'm like, okay, we might have in Center Grove put the whooping on them and then Ben Davis put a put a nice healthy whooping on uh on on uh crown point so the south has where it's at for 6a football at least so for now for right yeah. now uh, for the, like the last 10 years <laughs> yeah the western super duels will be good uh, you got Hamilton Heights Jay County Harrison West Lafayette uh, uh western so the three teams that are going to be in the hunt at two way Jay County hunting some, uh, getting some experience against some of those teams. I know, I think they're new in there. Cathedral Super Six, we talked about that. Um, that's going to be, it says, I do have Connorsville there. I do not have confirmation, but if Connorsville's there, that's going to be a long day for them. <laughs> Tough. Then that's, then you got the Harvest Classic and then the Old Barn Brawl at Southridge. They, are they really wrestling in a barn there, Dustin? Uh, no, I don't think it's really in a barn. Hey, that's where the Cubbies are at this weekend is the old barn brawl. So nice. That's really It'd be cool if it wasn't a barn. That'd <laughs> totally be a south uh southern Indiana move there. <laughs> It'd be a southern Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I better put Floyd Central in the right event there because it says that they're there, but you know, I, don't I think it's their uh I think it's their B team. Their B yeah. team goes to the South Yeah, the <laughs> Southridge. Yeah, I just put it in there because, you know, I, there's, I, I will say, you know, uh, Sisson has yet to return my text about their schedule. I think he's probably still putting it together. Well, I mean, he's probably, he jumps rope, so he's probably jumping rope. He hasn't had a chance yet. The bar brawl. <laughs> no, 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 the bar yeah. brawl. Harvey, just... Hey, I've ignored Harvey all night. He's had jokes all night. I mean, he <laughs> thinks he can dress in all black and wear a big 10-gallon bucket hat and thinks he's going to get props on here, but we're just going to keep ignoring Harvey. <laughs> What's the score even at now, Harvey? I can't keep up. Where are you at? Still Center Grove? Where are you? I don't know. Cathedral? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> skip Harvey. Block him out. Next. Uh, Har- yeah, I forgot Kokomo's at the Harvest now. Oh, yeah. May, Kokomo. Aubin, Dallinger, Smendorf, Cameron Woods. Uh, that'd be cool to see uh, Coach Chicago go up and wrestle McNutt. I see McNutt uh, on Highlands uh, track wrestling had him at 215, but I know he's been wrestling heavy. Yeah, i he makes 215. That's going to be very interesting. Um, when do they do get the brackets out for the harvest? They used to do it on Wednesday, but I believe they do it like, I don't know. Uh, Zach might have a better idea, but I think they've been doing it like that morning. Oh, that, that'd be all. That's awesome. <laughs> Got a lot of 285s that would want. Oh, it's one tournament. Have, a, have one of them cut down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, day of CD. Oh boy, I bet that's fun. Especially if he has Johansson there, because Johansson loves to argue. Man, I got to sit in that a couple times, and man, it is exhausting. <laughs> that, that's I mean, I, I couldn't even imagine sitting in the Al Smith. They're like, well, my kid was at the regional last year. I was like, that, but everyone goes to the regional, man. Like you're the, <laughs> the like the kids. My, like, I my son was at like, the regional I'm, too. He is seven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, it's, and that's just like the argument for like the six and seven seed. You can definitely tell, like, like again, like the tiers, right? Like the top tier teams, like I ah, draw my hat, go for it. 
Yeah. I think that's what they said that year with Goodwin, right? They're like, Goodwin's going to be a seven. Like, ah, you know what? Don't even, don't even see them. The year he won it. Yeah. Pull, uh, pull him yeah. off ahead. It'll be fine. It was Goodwin and Weems. I, I tried telling them. I was like, and they, you know, they're, they, they want, no one wanted them seed because they didn't have the right criteria. Like, they're pretty good. And he and was right. Like, common sense criteria is usually better. I mean, yeah. I, I obviously understand there's like a system to it. Um, I think one time we did, uh, we told Dane, and he's like, well, you got to hold the criteria. I'm like, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> like, this is like, this is the guys. And I think we were pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's. And then we keep like our pre-seed at, like off to the side and then see how it ends up placing and it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it gets poorly seeded and then you see a couple bracket busters in there. But it was actually Al Smith was better than you see 12. There were a lot less arguments because you knew, especially those guys that are like six to you know, six, five, six, seven, eight that are all battling for those spots. You know, there's seven or eight guys battling, and then they're like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to get a one or two seed early, so I'll take a nine or ten and a little bit less arguing. I think, I think a lot of times when you have, like, record being the decider, it's it's it, it's tough. I think last year, like, uh, Crown Point, I think uh, Christian Washington came in there under 500. Sonny Sessa might have been under 500, yeah. too, last year going in there. And they were like, yeah, well, you know, my guys, you know, 24 and all. I'm thinking, like, how, how do you guys have 25 matches already, like, at Christmas? Yeah. Oh, that, some of them are, yeah, some get a lot of matches, and you can't go off of that. You cannot use the number of matches early in the season. And and honestly, yeah, because early season, you you have 20 matches. Even if you have 15 and you lose two, and that guy that's, has 20, he, he can lose three or four times, you know, it's so, yeah. And like, and then like, I, I don't like when it goes sideways, like, well, like they're going to wrestle it anyways. Like, obviously they're going to wrestle it. We know that. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> like, they want to just do the counters bill and draw it out of a hat. I mean, everyone can be a blind draw. Yeah. No, then you don't complain. <laughs> so anyway, um, what else do we have to talk about this week? Any rankings coming out, Dustin? <laughs> Uh, hey, you can go ahead and update what I, I mean. There wasn't a lot of action last week. I had some weight changes, and I've had weight changes here, but I won't make those till the next time. But if you want to go ahead and update Evansville semi state number one, go for it. It's ready. Okay, we can update those. We'll get those what about in the morning. The big return we haven't talked about CM Punk at the Survivor Series, right? Like, man, massive, man. That. Massive. Whoever thought we see CM Punk back in a WWE ring again? Uh, it did not look like, I mean, just from the side stuff, it did not look like the guys there were all really happy about it, right? <laughs> no, they were, yeah, they Seth were pretty Rollins. upset. Yeah, Seth Rollins did not look happy. My, my wife's met him before. CM Punk? Yeah. When, when he was, was like doing had, house shows. I think shows you told me stuff. that, right? Yeah. Yeah. One of her good friends was like friends with him, like growing up and stuff. The girls used to love pro wrestling. So we used to meet all the pro wrestlers. And, like, some of them were, like, you know, some of them were really cool. Man, Daniel Bryan was not really cool. He was, like, really a jerk. And he's little. He's tiny. Like, whatever they're saying he is on TV, not close. Randy Orton, best guy ever, bro. So nice. Uh, oh, we do need to know, uh, Parlor Donuts, what's your review? Oh, they were good, man. I bought two dozen, probably too much. <laughs> a dozen probably would have been enough. Uh, <laughs> what do you do? Got- get, a, get every donut they had? I did, man. I had to, I had to give you guys a real review here. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, just told me the the cookies and cream one were pretty good. Oreos on top. Um, I had a bunch of them over Thanksgiving. I had to throw some out. They're good. You're right. They're kind of uh, like a like a croissant a little bit, a little flaky. But they're really good. Uh, I mean, Monster Donuts, like they're both pretty fresh. Monster Donuts good though. Yeah. Monster Donut's really good. I, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna get Monster Donut tomorrow. I gotta go to the office. I'm gonna stop by, <laughs> grab some of those. <laughs> I almost want, you know, compared to like a Monster Donut, I'd almost say they're almost in different categories. Because the, the the Monster yeah. Donut's gonna, it's Monster it, Donut, yeah. Monster, uh, Monster Donut's more of a um, like a traditional donut, right? Yeah. Like it's like made there. And like Parlor Donut is more of like, um, like almost like a cupcake kind of. There's like a lot of toppings on them. It's yeah. pretty big. Yeah, so they're almost different. Yeah, I'm glad I took a couple He was best... not very nice to the girls. What's the best donut place in Evansville? 
I don't know, man. I'm not sure about Evansville Donuts. I never – it's usually just straight to the arena, so I'm sure somebody will pop in and tell us. <laughs> man, we got to – you got to know good breakfast places. You got to – we, we got to have a full gamut of where we're going to hang out. And, I mean, I want I want my I can tell you all about where we're going every hour. I can tell you all about dinner and the nightlife, but the breakfast will never hit right. Like, breakfast <laughs> is just – we get to the arena for some wrestling. So. <laughs> yeah. How about Chris Bond's dad doing hot dog reviews yeah. in tournaments? That's pretty good. I thought that was actually it, the, the kid doing it when it said, because the screen name's you know, Christopher Bond. I'm like, is the, the kid really doing hot dog reviews? At, you know, Bro, he was a 13 pounder. Now he's like a 57 pounder. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> it says in Evansville right now, number one donut place, Parlor Donuts. Hey, donut there bank. you go. Parlor's expanding. Two donut banks. So, yeah, or donut gonna... bank sounds like donut bank yeah so uh yeah we're, I, I like the the, uh, the the hot dog reviews were that was pretty comical definitely would i'm looking forward to more and more of what uh, schools have the best uh, hot dogs i thought he was talking about frankfurt you know i was like okay frankfurt and then like oh actually hot dogs <laughs> that one he threw me off he threw me for a couple of loops as far as you know i thought i was thinking frankfurt and then <laughs> And then also, I thought it was the kid posting about his his travels. Um, man, we need to get more better concession stand uh, reviews too. <laughs> yes, I, I think the people throwing some some things out there. Lake Central does have a good walking taco, or they did. I haven't had it in a while. They got good. Uh, they do have a good hospitality room, or they did. I haven't been there in a while. <laughs> they better have a good hospitality room still. I hope, man. They used to do Pepinos in there. It's pretty good. I'm sure Jeff Jeffersonville is going to have a good hospitality room. I don't think Danny does anything without a good hospitality room, does he? Nah, yeah. Well, you know what, man? Like the Turkey Tussle last weekend, uh, there was no hospitality. But, yeah, he'll have it right for the Jeff Duels. Usually it's a, it's either a pasta hospitality room or a chili hospitality room. Like, it's pretty good. Ooh, that chili uh, wouldn't be good. Uh, <laughs> that second half of the day with refs uh, after having some chili it might not be good. <laughs> You know what? Last year he had Olive Garden and uh, Jersey Mike's. That was he added um, uh, catered last year. That was pretty good. So wow, fancy we'll see. in Jeffersonville. They have a, they have an Olive Garden. In yeah. Holy cow! Uh, Clarksville, right next to Jeffersonville. Yeah. Oh. Said the cross-eyed cricket for breakfast. Hmm. That sounds susty. <laughs> Bro, it, lo- it looks pretty good. I just looked it up. It looks. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's got a separate Google search going on for food in the, in the bill. <laughs> the cross-eyed cricket. That, that sounds. See. Usually, it's whatever coffee the Ford Center serve, and that's what's for <laughs> breakfast. Triple B's breakfast of choice on Saturday mornings. Man, are, are they? Do they tax like uh, like India or what? A Gainbridge? <laughs> no, okay, I don't know. Twenty-five dollars for uh, for some Chick-fil-A. I just charge it to Indiana Matt. I could never tell you what I pay. I don't know. <laughs> Do you have us a a a, a uh, suite yet, there, Dustin? That's your only job. Hey, so Marquio's back. So I know now everybody knows Marquio, but Marquio's always been my inside guy, and he got moved, and he just messaged me the other day that he's kind of back uh, in a role there. So I'm going to reach out and see if we can get the Indiana Matt suite going on for sure. Yeah, during hey, stay during gear. semi. We have gear. We'll hook them up during, with a whole gamut of gear. During semi state, they have Ella, they have a thirty dollar, like you have to pay the ten bucks to get in, but then for thirty bucks you kind of get like a nicer seating area. I don't know if they'll do that for state or not, but man, yeah, hopefully we can land a suite and uh, throw stuff at all the peasants below us. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we usually we're of the people. I mean, we're, we, we, that won't. Limit us Har- hey, hold on. Blake Harvey, coffee and pulled pork nachos. That's 100% the best breakfast at Evansville <laughs> in the Ford Center. Yeah, Bears are down one now. So, so what, what? what's the uh, – what is the concessions at at uh, the Ford Center? Uh, pork- so, seriously, pulled pull pork nachos are good. Um, I don't know a whole lot other than that. Dipping Dots, you get Dipping Dots anywhere and everywhere. No shaved ice, no famous Gamebridge shaved ice that I can they, they remember. They don't have the but- shaved ice at Gamebridge anymore. They have the, no, they got, but oh, well, what's we the, ran it out, I guess. Maybe we can start a petition to get shaved ice back in two years, or we'll just keep going to Evansville. They have Kona Ice, which is a wannabe shaved ice. 
Yeah. I don't know. States can't, yeah. State really hasn't been the same since they took out Shave Dice. I don't even know if it counts as real state, state finals. I feel uh, like semi-state has a pretty massive uh, chicken tender fry basket for a decent price. Maybe I'm crazy on that. Somebody will correct me, but it doesn't <laughs> seem like the prices are too wild. Bro, I'm telling you, I think, like, the state finals changed. You know, saving seeds, no shaved ice. It's tough, man. Yeah, it's, it's not like the good old days, you know. The mats not back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, like you can see the wrestling. Like, I don't like that either. Give me <laughs> those four mats the old way. Oh, man, you guys going to do this, like, cross thing too? I don't know if the floor is big enough. You say you all. I live three hours from Evansville. I'm just their uh, – You're the representative, man. <laughs> I'm just the, the representative by proxy. They don't let me in on none of this stuff or anything, so. Yeah, I don't – because it looks like it's very similar to Fort Wayne as far as – I would say it would be very – close for them to be able to do it they, and they might be able to i mean it was pretty tight you don't have that yeah no set i mean I, gamers they had a little section between the masks but maybe if they're all kind of butted up or something but yeah they didn't have uh, yeah i don't know i i thought that was a little bit better but there they don't have do they look at joe seating? butler joe butler knows the menu look at joe butler i have a boy joe butler <laughs> We're gonna have to get him on here for the. Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm screenshot this man. <laughs> Can I just go in and say, "Give me the Joe Butler" or what? That's right, give me the Joe Butler. <laughs> he, he, he's he, he's been to the Evansville a few times. He, he knows what he gets. <laughs> yeah. Um. He had to stress eat. I just hang out. I'm still trying to hang. Maybe by the finals, I'm good to eat usually. But so the Ford Center doesn't. They don't have like. And seating, do they? I'm trying to see. What's that? They don't. Okay, they do have a little bit of end seating, right? Yeah, it's all the way around. Yeah. Okay, it is all the way. I wasn't sure. I thought it most of the way you you don't see very much in the end, but I guess it is all the way around. So, okay. Now they do have an, an upper level that's always blocked off for semi state. I'm assuming for state that'll be open. Yeah. Um, it'll be a neat experience. I mean, it's it's a pretty you know. It's newer than Gamebridge. It's a pretty good, nice arena. I know everybody's talking about the, the ice and the, all that stuff, but. Wonderful. I mean, it's nicer than Fort Wayne, Joe. Let's not get carried away there. I mean. It, it looks like a, a wannabe Fort Wayne Coliseum. That's all I got to say. It looks almost exactly a mirror one. image other than newer. Got it's less than 100 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Fort Wayne. Yeah, I'm sure that's. And every picture I have seen looks very, they look very similar, but they did, uh, like Fort Wayne, they, they literally about 20 years ago, raised the roof at Fort Wayne to make, to add more seating. Yep. They, they literally raised it. We had a bunch of people just go. Mm. So, uh, yeah, but no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be, we'll be, uh, close together. Hopefully Dustin gets us, you know, pulls his weight and gets us a suite. If not, he'll, uh, if not, half, um, please put yeah, in your application. Half the man I used to be, so I don't know. We'll see. If, if not, put in your application for Evansville Semi-State Ranker. <laughs> and you get to be on shows like this and rant. and. Hey, we'll see. Hey, I've been torn. Like, do I keep ranking next year? Like, that'll bring some tension in the Ben's household if I continue. Or do I do I, uh, do I? I let somebody else just do one weight class in the rankings <laughs> next year? I don't know. I've been going back and forth on what to do. Oh, just – I mean, what's he going to do? Beat you up? He can't beat you up, can he? No, uh uh-uh. He's not a state champion like his dad is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> see? He's not even a seat. Yeah. So, you know, he, until, he, until he can take you, I wouldn't be wor- worried about it. Gina, I'm more worried about his mom. I'm more worried about his mom than him. <laughs> Mrs. Triple, we don't play no games around here. She gets that Italian stallion going and it's over. So. She, well, she has access to uh, um, very uh, – very potent firearms and stuff from what i've gathered <laughs> so. she's retired so we're good we're yeah, good i'm sure she can make a couple phone calls <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i guess that's that's one i'd be worried about so anyway mike do we have anything else to talk about uh no i think it's about it any big rants and and raves about uh things no nah. I think, uh, you know, I was excited. Like, I always feel like this is, like, um, obviously, no disrespect to the people that have already wrestled, but, uh, like, I feel like this is the week where it really starts to kick off. 
Yeah. yeah. The first couple of weeks are kind of appetizers, and then this week it really, I, I mean, they're by about 20 duels that are going to be pretty good to watch. And if you're if you're not vested in any teams, or if you, even if you are and you have a free night, go watch one because there's going to be a lot of good duels, and, you know, go support those teams and watch some good wrestling. Obviously, if you go to Indiana Matt, there's this, uh, if you go to homepage and this week, the whole listing of the matches might want to double check on their social medias to make sure that the match is occurring, especially. Do you have the correct times listed too? Also, um, as I said, check the uh, check their social medias just to double check times and everything, but they are fairly accurate. And so, um, but yeah, like with the football teams, some of the teams that were in football might not be might be. I, I saw Adam Central moved. I think Adam Central and Norwell moved their match. I don't know why and Central <laughs> schedules anything before uh, mid mid December, but um, yeah. So check those schedules and should be some good matches this week. And you know, uh, we'll have a. We'll have, I, I know you'll have a lot of work this weekend. Both you guys will be uh, going through a lot of results and put those in the uh, on the website. Contact them. Contact Howie and Dane and. Caleb. So, with that, any last parting words there, Dustin? Floyd Central State Duels. Don't mess it up like you guys almost messed up East last year. Make it happen. <laughs> okay. Well, we will see you guys next Monday. Dustin might come on. I don't know. Maybe we'll just maybe he'll just be a recurring guest every Monday to uh, talk. Oh yeah, I forgot one other thing. On Saturday, the second is the 15th anniversary of the founding of Indiana Matt. Uh, Dustin? <laughs> can you, can you, yeah. any, uh, any uh, memories, any stories you want to uh, share? Am I the only administrator slash ranker that's ever been banned multiple times from Indiana <laughs> Matt? I think I am. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's my guys. memory. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been banned. <laughs> I got banned one time for calling a move a ghetto blaster when the uh, kid from Cumberland drop kicked the U of I kid. That got me banned for a week because Joe told me to quit and I wouldn't quit saying it over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it was. It was the ghetto blaster from the WWE from uh, what's his name? Bad News Brown. That's what it was. <laughs> nice. No, I can't remember the other one. I, know, I got banned again right in the middle of like the heat of semi-state rankings. People were fired up. I wouldn't update the rankings. And I wasn't during. When, I don't know. You weren't doing the rankings, and I banned you. I don't think, unless it was like, <laughs> unless it was the old days when it was the uh, when we just put them on the message board and we didn't actually have like a whole page dedicated to them. I don't know. Man. Yeah, no, man, but for real, hey, no, it, I think the coolest part about Indiana Matt is just meeting the people out in the state. Um, you know, they're all cool. They always take jabs if they don't agree with the rankings, but I've never had anybody, uh, like, too upset or whatever. I guess a couple times way, way, way back in the day, but as we've all become more educated and gotten things right, it's cool to meet people out and about. Um, stories from, like, walking through a bar at 2 in the morning and somebody yelling, you're triple B, and, you know, meeting these people and <laughs> – Things like that. So it's always been cool. I made good friends through here. You guys, other people throughout the state and in the southern part of the state. Um, the wrestling community is awesome. And Indiana Match just kind of kept pushing that forward. So that's my biggest takeaway from Indiana Match. Just it's closed, brought us all closer together. And we're all working toward the common of growing Indiana wrestling. And it's it's a pretty neat thing. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't understand that we were kind of adversaries back in the day. I was just telling some people earlier today, like, oh, man, me and Caprino, like, I went up to him and introduced myself at Folk South State and said I was Jay Biceps, and <laughs> it was one of the funniest interactions ever. So that's some old school board stuff for you old timers. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are, that's some good old days of uh, causing trouble. And the, the, the old board when we – oh, yeah, we got it, – it, it's kind of I, – I, I find it pretty cool that, you know, we were – we never really – got after it we, we had differences of opinions but also have yeah both love the sport and stuff and so it's been more than anything becoming friends with guys like you that uh maybe were a little bit of adver adversary and now you know hang out and stuff so 
Mike, any uh, comments on 15 years? Yeah, I mean, kind of the same thing Dustin was saying, like, um, just meeting the people around the state and just kind of, you know, like, you really realize how, like, the boards kind of brought a lot of people together, you know, like, even like the show, like, it's, it's one of those things, like, you, you see all the people, the same people, a lot of the same people in the comments all the time, which is really cool. Um, and that's been awesome, I think. Uh, and it's just kind of raised every year, like, you know, like you said, like, it used to be you know, pinned to the board, like here's a rankings pinned to the board. And then it's become like article It's become, you know, some broadcast and different things like that, which has been really cool. Uh, and like all times I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, you're like, Hey man, like we should do a show. I think it used to be like a Google hangout. We should do a Google hangout. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> and you're like, they're going to like, you know, people want to talk about rank is like, no one's going to watch that. And then, like, I think, like, the third show, and, like, someone was like, man, when you said that, and I'm like, bro, like, people are really listening to this. Like, I got to, like, really, like, lock this in. Um, but, like, you know, different stuff like that, like Dustin said, too, like, it, it's when you're out, like, people are really, really cool, man. And we have a really cool state. And, you know, obviously, like, you and Eric and Chad, you know, throwing it together was, like, one of those, you know, really cool events. And. You know, I didn't know you. Like the first time I ever met you was at the state finals that first year. Yeah. Like the first time I ever met Chad was at, um, you know, the the Tricoff. So it was like one of those things. Like, hey, uh, I'm Mike Reiser. I did like the semester rankings. I think I'm gonna help you do this. Like, yeah. I'm gonna like help you with the uh, updates. It was like me and my brother, and we were like partying pretty hard back then. And I think we probably weren't the like best representatives on media. <laughs> you know, media <laughs> but it's like, man, 15 years. So like yeah. 24 years old, 25 years old. So it was yeah. definitely different. And like, you know, it, it's been really cool. And just like the friendships and stuff, like obviously, you know, with Dane and Howie and like doing the, uh, the top golf a couple of years ago, that was really cool. Yeah. It's, it's been uh, pretty cool just to see. I mean, it was a uh, Chad holding ball, Carl Hungus, very known as Carl Hungus, who he, he lurks on the board. I know still a little bit, uh, Eric McGill, they both talked me into it. I was like, yeah, we can put a put a website together. You know, I can do one and, you know, I can have it up in a couple hours and like, do it, do it. I'm like, no, it's going to be a lot of work. And I know that we, uh, there were some people that were not very much, not very happy about it. Um, probably still a few that feel the same way, but I think it the state's definitely better having that kind of co- the coverage that we provide. And, you know, always just like, it's fun. It's, uh, it's been pretty cool meeting a lot of people getting chased down oh. by uh, Grandma Bailey at Connersville the one time. <laughs> this is old lady oh. chasing me down. I'm like, oh, crap. I, I must have said something really bad about her uh, grandson. <laughs> so Well, even like the national recognition, I think it has been huge. I mean, for the state, like, you know, overall, I think, uh, you know, with the, um, you know, the dream team and things like that and going to Dapper Dan or, you know, what, you know, the, I don't know the name of it now, it's but, hard. yeah, yeah. No, that's, but I think those have been really cool events. And, uh, just like I said, like the see it grow like that has been really, really cool. And just kind of been there from the beginning, you know? Yep. It's now you're basically a freshman in high school unless they've been held yeah. back. <laughs> so, and sometimes, you know, like I get a lot of credit for stuff I don't do. They're like, man, like how you guys built those profiles? Like, yeah, dude, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, how I mean, do you guys do that like yeah that's Not been me, one man. of the things that we that i've always tried to you know that was kind of the, the vision i had it would be so cool to have a profile and be able to see that kind of stuff see the results see what they've done in the past and you know still working on some things but there's always room for improvement and kind of looking forward to the next 15 years i mean we've had 14 ipos so you know growing that you know you're on that event and things like that. And the dream team was after the dream team, I could just say that I was like, I just like, what, what can I do to top this? You know, that was like an awesome night of wrestling. And, and think about like how many, um, you know, future all Americans were in there and just, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. There are two guys attended my first, attended my first IPO this year. Yeah. I, uh, pretty finally. Yeah. The, uh, dream team two of the guys, that wrestled in it, Frannick and uh, Riel Woods were at Wrestle for Iowa now. There was a third one that uh, did wrestle for Iowa, but uh, not anymore. <laughs> he's getting a bogus rap, I feel like. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, he wrestled in it a couple times. So 
I thought uh, like that's been really cool. The growth of that, like I said, the articles, um, the magazine, like like the magazine was, you know, how, how the magazine's grown over the years. Um, it's just like it's it's really cool to see and just kind of be a part of. Yeah. So a small part of it. Yeah. Thanks to everyone that has supported us buying a magazine or going to IPO or just saying thanks and and posting trash talk on the message board to get more clicks. <laughs> Well, I, I think that's a big part of it too, man. Just yeah. the, the message board's kind of like, sometimes it's dead, but like, you know, like I, I think people used to be like, oh man, like, do you ever get like upset at like so-and-so who's on the board? Like, and I just use like Garcia, like people are like, oh, do you get mad at Garcia? I was like, no, actually I like what Chris does. <laughs> I think Chris does a great job. It like brings people in there. It creates, it creates like an area where like people want to see that, you know? Yeah. Like people have to go there to see what he's going to say. And, and every team, if every team had a guy like Chris, like obviously he's been the benefit of some really good teams and his boys are really good, but um, it makes like for more excitement. It builds excitement. Yeah, yeah, that, definitely. It's a uh, you know, there's when there's rivalries, when there's people, you know, putting out predictions saying you know this team's gonna beat this team, and then someone from that team's like, no, they're not. You know, you guys aren't gonna win this match or this match. It kind of it gets fun, and you know, I think most of the stuff is you know you know we, we do a good job of keeping people from from uh posting you know being down on kids but you know post your, well, your predictions and all that stuff yeah like I, I was just telling someone the other day they're like oh man like we it used to be this I was like yeah but like you don't want people like go fight one you're not if you're posting on message board you're not trying to fight anybody for real <laughs> like like oh when i see you okay cool like you're gonna see me and you're not gonna do nothing um, and like, you don't like that. And then like, you don't need people like, you know, like really bashing kids. Like they're still kids. Um, so I think that part of it and they're like, well, that's exciting. Like if you're an adult and you're looking for people tough talking on the internet and, uh, bashing kids, it's probably the wrong spot. Like go to Instagram, <laughs> like, you can do that all the time. Uh, but I think, uh, like that, that part's been really cool. The results, and then it's like spawned a couple shows. This show, uh, the Dana and Rex show, has really done well, um, and it's just—it's really cool, man. I, I think it's a really cool thing. Yep. So, 15 years. Um, look for it. We're gonna hopefully maybe get another article out this week. I got—I have the ideas. I gotta start getting them out to the writers. So, um, if you have any ideas, contact me. I'll put it down on a list. Can't guarantee too much, but I, you know, I like having the list and try to try to more focus on like seniors and stuff, you know, if, so if it's a younger person, a freshman or a sophomore, I'll probably just put it in for next year if I run out. But if not, you know, I like to, we've done articles on over a hundred teams, I believe, or kids or coaches or teams from, from a hundred different teams. So my goal eventually is to get all 300 in some, you know, in some way, you know, give some, some love to all those schools. I think that's cool, especially, you know, we, we talk about Crown Point, we talk about Bronzeburg, we talk about Center Grove, we talk about Cathedral. You know, there's a, there's a lot of other teams out there that are putting in a lot of work and a lot of kids that are really talented yeah. that deserve yeah, that there, kind of recognition. It doesn't always have to be like, you know, like the um the Parker Reynolds story is really cool. It's a, oh, it's yeah. a it's a good story to come back. Yeah, like I seen the Bears just came back to get a field goal in field goal range. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't always have to be like like a sad story or a, you know, a comeback story. Like, I think what I feel like, uh, and in our area, um, they used to do a really good job covering wrestling and like, obviously uh, the papers have kind of downsized and it's really, really tough, but yeah. like, we want to like recognize like the hard work of what people are doing in the state. And I think that's like the biggest thing. Like it's what the rankings do. Like people are like, well, that's your opinion. Well, I'm trying to like recognize what these guys are doing because I know how hard they work. It's more of a recognition thing. Like half the time, my pickums are way off of that. <laughs> um, and I think that that's like the biggest thing. Like when we come on here, uh, like we don't touch on every single match, but like, like the teams that are like have the most ranked guys are the easiest to talk about because they're the guys that have the, the most, you know? the most things that we're uh, aware of, but like, you can't be upset if you're not posting results, if you're not sending emails. Like, we don't ever talk about my kid. Like, cool, man, like, I didn't even know, like, he wrestled that match because you guys didn't post it. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst, man, the absolute worst. <laughs> yeah. 
Dude, it, that's that's legitimately like one of those things. Like, it looks cooler on your profile on your ranking when you have all your wins and losses on there, and you can just go in there and click it. Anybody, it's literally open for anyone to do it. Yes. Like, like people are like, I beat so and so, and you didn't put it in, bro. You can literally go in there. I gotta prove it. I can prove it today. Yeah. Yes. And that's <laughs> there's a lot of people. Right. Out put it out. Out. Yeah. The people that do uh, a lot of that, um, thank you very much for doing yeah. that. That's huge. That, that's huge. I mean, because we can't keep up with the accurate. Hey, 15 years ago, you couldn't find anything out about like modern day. They kept their lineup <laughs> super secret. Yes. Um, and the state was just so much bigger in terms of information that, you know, it's kind of, it's neat now to see more accurate rankings, people reaching out, sending you stuff. Uh, I've had people messaging me during this show with like lineup changes to the rankings and stuff. So, I mean, I appreciate all the help. I mean, I take it all, you know, I appreciate everything I can get. So. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I remember, I mean, if people don't know the kind of what happened to the, how Indiana Matt got started was that coach association had a message board that was, a lot of fun. I'll admit it was, it was a lot of fun. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, it got hacked and right. Um, so we, it would have been about this time, maybe three or four days, you know, about a week, you know, it was probably for about two weeks. It was down a week to two weeks and me, <laughs> I'm sure Oh, both of you guys were also kind of feeding for information. And it was right this time where everything's starting to get heated up as a coach. I'm looking for lineups. You know, I could, you could still get to most newspapers for free. So you're still kind of looking at newspapers and trying to find lineups and find results and all that stuff. And then, um, so then, you know, we were like, no one's getting, no one's going to get results out there. You know, no one's, you know, I'm, I'm fiending for the talk. I'm fiending to trash talk. Sure. will be about class wrestling, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then obviously I got talked into it and you know, got the board going and stuff and they end up getting their board going a little bit, but I think uh, the takeover was, was, you know, th their comeback wasn't very, very uh, long. So um, they've since then uh, conceded defeat to the 800 pound gorilla. And, and that was the, that was Chad's uh, idea. So a lot, a lot of the ideas are probably not mine for the most part. There are a lot of like Chad, Mike, Nick, you guys, you know, all you guys will give me an idea and I usually I'll analyze it and then run with it. But Chad was, yeah. Chad was the, uh, the, the starter of a lot of ideas. He's like, yeah, the 800 pound gorilla. I'm like, what is, you know, I didn't totally understand. I looked it up. I go, yes, let's do it. You know, cause I was probably fairly well known on the board, even though I was still fairly anonymous <laughs> at that time. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty fun. And, you know, I, enjoyed the more than anything the the friendships we've reformed with you know howie you guys caleb dane you know and others that have you know helped out with the website and it's kind of it's been fun to grow it and you know just a lot of a lot of cool things so yeah okay now we might be done <laughs> bears got hey, be be hey bears win and they're gonna mess up their draft pick so damn <laughs> it <laughs> damn it damn it i think carolina i think carolina's gonna let them get that number one pick <laughs> they're gonna mess around and end up keeping eberflus another year and that'll be the worst thing that could ever happen <laughs> oh man that, that yeah that would be terrible are we gonna are, you're and that's how you know we're done because we're going to bears talk now <laughs> we're gonna, bears win sorry pence I'm you, gonna, you guys I are depressed that the bears won a game <laughs> Hey, this late in the season, man, we need to clean house. <laughs> Players included? Not Fields, but maybe everybody. Else. I'm yeah, a field I, believer. Give me I'm Marvin Harrison Jr. and let's go. Yeah. I'm a field believer too. You guys, you guys going to move to Arlington Heights too? Dude, I think that would be better for them. Have you ever tried to get out of a Bears game? Holy smokes, man. <laughs> Dude, it is not easy. I've driven by there enough that I'm like, man, I, where do you park? Like down by the lake, kind of. They have like designated parking garage, like parking areas. You Man, parking like McCormick, McCormick Place. You can park. Uh, there. Yeah, a little bit further back by like uh, Waverly Island <laughs> or uh, Northerly Island. We, we like, took a ta we took a taxi. We went to Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and we taxied and Ubered and then walked back for to the hotel. How terrible is Lakeshore Drive when you're getting out of there? It's awful. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can imagine. That being said, any region people, I'll give you plugs for Bears tickets. So whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I've been seeing people selling them real cheap lately, especially right now because they're about to be. It's about to be cold. Don't want to go watch cold. Hey, play. down here, the minute Burroughs went on IR, all, all the Bengals tickets flooded Facebook. Everybody was selling their tickets for <laughs> Bengals Steelers yesterday. <laughs> nice. You know, Hawk would go. Hawk loves the Steelers, bro. Maybe you can he could have got cheap tickets. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, well, we will see you guys next week. Thanks, Dustin, for joining us. And um, yeah, we'll see everyone next week.